This one is also from February uh, the 23rd of uh, this year, 2010, and the Mayan day then was 12 rabbit or star, and this is called learning without effort. We don't really need to study things to understand them, you know. Just to be exposed to them is enough. We pick them up rather like osmosis. I remember when I first learned about this back in college in the 1970s. Yeah, I know, that dates me, but it doesn't really, you know, just the body. Anyway, school had always been rather easy for me. Somehow I always managed good grades and I knew I didn't really need to study much. It wasn't until university, though, that the understanding of this sort of came together and presented itself to me. It was then that I found myself understanding how I studied and why that was, why it worked. I would read my text until I found myself reading the same sentence a couple or three times. Then I somehow knew it was break time. But I also knew that the break of as little as three to five minutes would do. Then I could return to the text and continue on refreshed. The understanding that arose was that the conscious mind is not at all suited for study. That is something better done by the unconscious or subconscious aspect of the mind. All we have to do is present the data to the inner mind, the deeper mind, and let it do the rest. What about the study breaks? That was a way I learned to cooperate with the deeper mind. It seems that, at least for me, I was attuned to when the deeper mind was alert and receptive when it was in input mode. When my conscious mind would start to get a bit fuzzy, when I would find myself rereading the same thing, that was the signal from the inner mind to take a break. While I would take a few minutes to do something else or to just sit there and daydream, the point being not to be thinking about or rehashing in mind the subject matter just read, the subconscious would be doing its thing incorporating the material just read. Thus, those fuzzy periods were indicators that the inner mind was temporarily overloaded, that it needed first to integrate what it had just read before taking in anything else successfully. Oh, we've all experienced cramming for a test or the like. We can force feed the mind to a certain extent fairly successfully but what I'm sharing here is another way of learning entirely. Rather than making an effort of learning, it's almost as if one can just responsibly read the assignments once through. I like highlighting the main points and then be finished. The only extra study required might be a reread over the highlighted text, not over the whole assignment. Does this sound too easy? It does work, you know. Give it a try. It is a matter of attuning to your inner wisdom. It helps first just to know it's there, that this is possible. Tension and stress itself work against taking in and successfully storing information in the mind. This way of studying certainly all but eliminates any tension. It's as easy as just reading the material with interest and attention. That part is important. Turn off the stereo, the TV. You can't be thinking about other things. You must concentrate. And the way I came to understand it is that the mind stores things more easily when it creates a structure within. It needs a context for things. That is provided by your previous study in the subject at hand. Then, with intense focus, you study the current assignment. Oh, wait, there is one more trick that helps this work rather smoothly. 
Before you read a book, read the table of contents with focus and attention. This helps quite a bit to place within the inner mind a structure or skeleton on which it can then conveniently hang the material as it's later read or studied, an organizational structure. The same holds true for an assignment, but here you read the chapter titles and the section headings first before going back and reading all the content of the assignment. I would begin the assignment in the table of contents by a refresher reading of the assigned section. This creates the skeleton ready to be fleshed out with a detailed reading. It's also useful to read the table of contents around the current assignment, refreshing on the previous and next chapter structure. Do you see how this creates the filing cabinet, so to speak? into which you can then place the information in a nice orderly fashion. This really helps with both the initial learning and retention with testing. Thus, I learned to make a friend of my subconscious or unconscious mind. It is more likely the subconscious, I guess, because I was conscious of it in a way. I at least could get the signals from it when it was getting overloaded and needed me to quit reading or taking in the material so that it could integrate what I just read before continuing. How much you read at a sitting is not really the point, as the amount you can take in successfully before having to take a short break will differ. I found it often had to do either with the complexity of the material itself or with how comfortable I was with the subject matter or with the contents of the assignment. If I disagreed with my philosophy or under, if it disagreed with my philosophy or understanding of life, for instance, I would have to go much slower, taking it in smaller bits. This could also create retention issues since it created cognitive dissonance or moral dissonance, or philosophical difference, you get dissonance, you get the picture. Okay, and what a hoot. Me delving so deep into the mental mind. It's a bit ridiculous considering where I am, where I abide these days. Oh well, I told you though, I'm comfortable with knowledge, with learning, I've spent a good part of my life taking it in and usually graduating with honors. Still, it's funny to see this sort of thing coming up in my journaling. This is my frickin' journal. Do you see what I mean? I'm clueless about these things. What comes up is what comes up. There's no mental mind planning these things, laughing out loud here. This is crazy. Wait, I get it. In an earlier journal entry, I blogged about how we don't pursue understanding. It pursues us. About how really there is no doing involved. That it's more like a being. This is that. Hey, continuity. Imagine that. Good day.